In the mix. In the mix. It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Junior DJ's at I Know Where I'm At. I'm here with you. Yes, it's the DJ Roundtable with everyone here, and uh, we are missing a few. Uh, we have uh, one DJ who's working late, another DJ who is uh, actually DJing a wedding. So we have uh, Hunter is out working late tonight, and uh, Brentley is actually DJing a wedding. Again, this is, we're working DJs, and some has a gig on Tuesday night. Uh, they can't make it to the show. That happens. Uh, we originally had scheduled DJ Rachel for tonight, but unfortunately, she's under the weather. We wish her uh, the feeling better much quicker. Um, and Jeff's got a little bit of a bug in his throat. He said that uh, his throat's a little sore. Hopefully, it's nothing <laughs> nothing bad. Hopefully, it's just, you know, a little, maybe a little dry weather or whatever's going out by him out there in, in North Carolina, and he gets past that. And as always, I got Matt and Mike James has done a return uh, here, and he, he's always uh, on here when he can get in. He's a busy man as well with a lot of gigs, doing stuff down there in Central Illinois, especially with the one of the universities down there. He does a, a gigs with them, so uh, when he has time, he spots in here, stops in here, and has fun with us. So let's start off the round table with the first question of the night. And this is actually from another Chicago DJ uh, from Wild Bill, Bill Patterson. Uh, Bill, thank you for asking for the question. And he writes, roundtable uh, talk idea. Uh, talk about songs guaranteed to keep the dance floor packed. And he knows it's impossible to work 100% of the time. So these are songs that not everyone's going to come running. But... For the most part, people are going to come run to the dance floor and it's going to keep them on the dance floor as long as possible. And I'm going to start with Jeff. Jeff, I know you do some weddings and special events, but you also do some uh, proms and um, you know uh, other stuff in schools. What are some of the things that you feel work for you on the dance floor right now? Uh, well, it depends on the crowd, obviously, but um, you know, for school events. Um, you know, for the uh, high school, middle school and high school, you know, they're looking for stuff that's trending on TikTok. Um, you know, it could be anything from, uh, you know, Nicki Minaj, uh, you know, so, some of these um, uh, mix ups that's, uh, you know, the ludicrous versus Kylie Minogue that that can't get you out of my fantasy. Uh, you know, just uh, some crazy stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, just let I me. Mean, up stuff here i mean you know it's like, i tell you what was really hitting hard this past weekend for a middle school dance uh it was george ezra green green grass it's it's huge on tiktok but it's sped up if you play the normal version of that kids don't get it uh so you know you got to play the sped up version and they love it and they go out and they just jump all over the place for that how, how, how fast you got to speed up how fast you got to go up it's probably sped up i mean I, you know it's um it's probably sped up 20%, 25%, but the pitch is, you know, doubled. So, uh, you know, so, so stuff like that, uh, the bangers are, you know, for those kids are going to be, you know, jump around house of pain. They love that. You know, big request is, uh, ice, ice baby, you know, just old, old school stuff, uh, that they look back on and, you know, stuff like my humps, black eyed peas, um, you know, they really, they, they get into that. Now, if you get into weddings, it's going to be a different crowd. Older crowd is going to be a completely different uh, banger list. So, And that that's the important thing is knowing your crowd. And I always feel that helps to determine what are some bangers that work very well for each event. And again, like you said, each event's different. So uh, Mike James down there in central Illinois, uh, what about you? What what are the, some of the things that work really well for you that will pack a dance floor to work most of the time? Well, ironically, I just worked a gig today at the junior high. You know, it was their last day of school, so they booked me in to come out there and play their fun day, I guess. But I'll tell you, honestly, uh, it's a little bit of a different crowd down here. You know, a lot of uh, like newer country goes over real well here. Uh, all the line dancing songs always go over really great, you know. And then there's like the, you know, the perennial bangers, which are like 90s, 2000s hip hop. I think what Jeff was kind of referring to, too. I mean, some of that stuff, I mean, it's just as good today as it was, 
when it hit, when we remember it actually coming out for the first time, you know. And, and I, you know, I, I do pretty, I do pretty well with that. And that, that's the important thing is that, you know, again, knowing your crowd, especially with uh, kids, you know, um, you know, be it, you know, seventh grade, eighth grade, fifth grade, fourth grade, knowing your, your clientele is an important thing. You know, Jeff dealing with, uh, you know, high school kids, I'm sure Jeff can agree with you that high school kids are totally different than, you know, grade school kids, kids in second, third, and fourth grade are going to want totally different things. One of the things that um, DJ Cool Thing is in the chat, uh, his last gig, which I believe that's at Sam's Corner, he got requests for Gundam Style and Baby Shark. Um, and then um, we got another one here. Uh, you might know him, uh, Mike. He's your son. He's in the chat. I uh, personally request uh, Right Foot Creep by NWA, Young Boy Today, at the Fun Day. So he yes. requested that song right those there. Are like the really? little, those are the little kids. Those are the little kids requesting that. And I was like, are you serious? Like, <laughs> it's all TikTok. It's all stuff on TikTok. You know what I mean? It's If you the can stay familiar with that. With that great school kids, yeah. Yeah, it's re it was just insane. I mean, just how small these kids were asking me for right step creep, you know. Like I played it for, I found an edited version, so you know. And they're all out there doing the greedy, like it's funny. That's that's always fun when you see little kids trying to do uh, some of the dances, especially like uh, even like cha cha slide or cupid shuffle, or you know, trying to do a tootsie slide or trying to do some of the other stuff, you know. It's 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 fun. They're over there dancing to Drake, and they have no idea what the song means. You know, like you know, Hotline Bling. They like they have no idea what it means. They they, they think maybe it's a sandwich or something like that. They have a restaurant or something, and it's not that. Sorry, kids. <laughs> they got two spoons. Yeah, hey, that's fine. I much rather have them think that, and when they become adults, they're like, "Oh my god, that's what it means." <laughs> so, yeah, Matt, I you, request, um, I got a request Saturday night when I was um, DJing his middle school uh, dance. For Soldier Boy, and I'm like, yeah, crank that. Okay, I'll play it. You have no idea what it means, but I will play it. <laughs> and uh, the, it was funny because it, these the middle school kids were afraid to get out on the floor. You know, the girls would come out a little bit. The guys did not come out until I started playing line dances, and then it was everybody wanted line dances the rest of the night. I mean, you know, the wobble got requested about a dozen times. Played it twice. But, you know, that's what keeps them on the floor. And, and it, was, it was funny when they first got out, half the kids did not know how to do the wobble. So the teacher was out there doing it and they just followed her. And, yeah, this is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's always fun. I'm not in California, man. And then, Matt, what about you? What do you run into for your events? What do you see that's uh, popular songs that keep the dance floor going? Uh, Like, Dances or for like weddings? Either way, where, where you feel that works on the dance floor? If you were look at weddings, you know, what I mean, everything works for weddings. Everything I play works. <laughs> uh, that's why I, I, you got okay, to know to self. Everything Matt plays, get his uh, playlists. I mean, play everything it, he plays. <laughs> I like you've seen some of my gig logs. My style is so open and varied. I mean, I did a Armenian wedding this weekend, and then a, a EDM heavy trap and dubstep and head banging mixed with some hip hop and classics wedding last weekend. So, you know, it, it depends on the group. Like if we're talking Spanish, like a Spanish crowd, like obviously Pepas is going to be huge. Vivir Mi Vida, Danza Kuduro. Uh, if you're doing like basic white people, then play that funky music. Yeah. You know, I've got a, uh, I want to dance with somebody, all that kind of classic stuff. Um, I don't know. I, I, I gauge the crowd and then I either start with, like dance with somebody high energy or I start at like hundred BPM with higher love Whitney Houston, um, for school dances. Yeah. I mean like I'm not on TikTok, but I, I listen to the TikTok radio station. So I'm at least somewhat up to date and stuff, but I, I try to send the kids like a request list ahead of time, which has really cut down on them bothering me at the dance. Um, but these kids just have such a short attention span that, I don't know. They're like the dances aren't fun anymore. Like doing school dances, it's just not. You can't play what you want to play like I used to. You know, the kids used to get just insanely hyped for any song, and now it's like they'll be pretty vocal if they don't like what you're playing. Or at least the kids I do. And maybe they're nicer over there in North Carolina, but California kids are not. Uh, let's just say privilege here. here. So, the, pri the privilege is uh, 
bleeds through at some some schools not all but there'll be times where i like i'll play what i think would be a banger and the kids are just standing there awkwardly and it's just like i don't know they, i don't know they, they don't know you don't like they don't like your uh current selection of skirlix huh i i it, it's it's weird because like they like the hype like hype trap so when you get like dj snake and eptic doing south side which i play a lot uh, and then you get into some like tremor and some of the more like classic stuff that has countdowns and big buildups and big drops and high energy. Those work. But like, obviously, these kids aren't going to know, like I did this past weekend, Take Over Control by Afrojack. Like that's an old 2010 song EDM. Like these kids aren't going to know anything about that uh, or any EDM that's even modern or current, honestly. So well, yeah, and you gotta look at you know these kids who are seven, eight, nine, ten, even go a little bit older into the high school kids, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 2010. You gotta remember a kid graduating high school right now, 17, 18, was seven or eight when that song came out. Were they listening to that song? They may. You may be able to hit them in high school and they may they may hear it or have heard it and like it. But if you're dealing with, you know, seven, eight, nine year olds, 10 year olds, you know, the parents are probably in their mid 20s to late 20s. Were they listening to that in 2010? Were they listening to that in 2012? It's it's a hard thing. You know, you're trying to hit the right, uh, right songs or the right to get the right uh, reaction. And it sometimes is a fickle crowd and they look at stuff and go, oh, that's not cool. So DJ Fire, we had a, a question uh, from a uh, viewer. Asking what songs do you play to get the dance floor going? And it doesn't mean you have to do it has to be 100 percent packed or work 100 percent of the time, but what songs work for you on your dance floors for events? Um a lot of the the line dances, cha cha slide, cupid shuffle, um uh the what is it? Party in USA, Miley Cyrus always gets them going. Uh, I wanted that away is a good like. I mean, kind of, doesn't really feel the dance floor, but it gets a lot of people like like a sing along because everyone sings that song. Um, uh, some of the older stuff. Um, I can't think of some of the older names. It, it, it's uh, when you put on the spot asking a question. It's hard to think of what um, what some of the names of the songs are. Um, Unlike DJ Solstice, who could just rat them right off the top of his head. I know my music, sir. I, I know my music too, but well, I know every. I know I'm every sure, single I'm one. Sure, I'm sure every, Mike's over there going, "No, he does not know his music." <laughs> every every single one of the eleven thousand songs in my library has been handpicked. Every single one. Not a. No. Not, I don't have any albums in there. None of no mass uploads. Every single song has been handpicked and downloaded since I was had an iPod whenever that came out. So. 10, 11, 12. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. It just depends on what kind of crowd you got. Like the wedding that me and Mike did last um, was kind of an odd crowd. Like they're like was told not to play some of the, like they didn't want to hear Cha Cha Slide. They didn't want to hear no rap. They didn't want to hear, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that will get people out on the dance floor. And, you know, I don't know if Mike has said this in, in the uh, DJ round table, but after a while, we have to do our jobs, and we have to fill that dance floor, and that's what I did. I started playing group dances, and he told me, he said, you can play them as long as they're requested. Well, um, I played a you couple, and them. he didn't say anything, so what did you say, Mike? You requested them. That's what I always I, say. It was requested. Yeah, pretty much. But in the end, he was all, you know, him and his wife was very happy and pleased, and seen the gig log it turned out pretty good i think it was because mike was there but that's uh <laughs> mike mike I just hope you play, play. play he's been doing it longer than me i'm still kind of learning but i'm uh i don't know it's i i know my my line dance songs really well i i i could normally which <laughs> trying to play line dance song after line dance song after line dance song i mean we wore them out pretty quick um I th I think we were done by we were done before nine thirty because we I played so many line dance songs and and WAP and uh, Miley Cyrus and 
a few of the songs they had on their playlist that they wanted played, and I played some ZZ Top, and that got them going. And uh, I mean, it just depends, I guess, on what what the kind of crowd there is. If it's an older person kind of crowd, you're not going to play a lot of them lying fast dances. A lot of people, you know, older groups want to just sit around and talk unless they're a kind of a more giddy up kind of group, I guess you would say. I've, I've saw some pretty crazy groups before. Like my uh, Halloween wedding I did last last year um, was kind of a rock headbanging kind of group because the, a few of them are in a band together. And that's the kind of music they do is that screaming, headbanging kind of stuff. And that's what they wanted to hear. So it was, uh, you can't, to me, you can't really dance that stuff. I mean, you do you just throw your head around, but uh, it's not the dancing I'm used to, I guess. Well, mo so. mosh pits count as dancing. So we'll go with mosh pit and we'll say that's dancing. So, <laughs> so but, uh, the, the, the big thing, big takeaway, which, you know, again, again, I agree with uh, all you guys as far as, you have to look at what the crowd is and kind of size up the crowd. Is it, is it a wedding? Is it a, you know, school dance? What age are the kids? If they're younger kids, TikTok is king. And you know, your TikTok music, you need to know what's popular on TikTok and you need to know what's, you know, out, out there. Uh, the other thing also you need to know is, you know, what, requests are what you can't play and those are the big things right there that will judge you and uh, figure out what is good to play at that event so needless to say uh, to go back to the uh, question it varies there's no I, I you know there's no one song or you know five songs because what works for one may not work for another and Different parts of the country, you know, we hear about, you know, again, uh, North Carolina to Central Illinois to California to uh, here to Chicago. You know, it's kind of the same thing. You know, you, you depends on the uh, event and uh, what the crowd is requesting. Uh, hey, buddy. Yeah. Um, show of hands. How many DJs have gotten a request for Apple Bottom Jeans? All the, the name of the hey, all the time. All the time. That is, yeah. Every gig. You play I, apple, bottom, apple bottom jeans. jeans. I'm like, you mean uh, what? That was today. That was actually today. <laughs> yeah, and that's I, you, how many how many people here have come up to you and tell you tell you lyrics of a song and ask for that song. It happens oh, all, all the time. time. All the time. Uh, can, can you play that song? The one that goes uh, do, 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 do. like uh, sure. Let me get that. Right up, because a lot of songs have that word in it. <laughs> so, Jeff, uh, I know you and uh, Matt and uh, Mike there do a lot of school dances, and um, that's not my forte because I do weddings. Here's one of the uh, things I got to ask you guys with school dances: if a school uh, if a school asks for your playlist prior to going to the school, so they can proof it, and make sure that songs are not inappropriate. Do you do that? Do you provide a list of songs that you're going to play for that night, or is it something that you kind of play on the fly? I've never, I've never been uh, asked for a playlist, uh, but every every school function that I do, I've been asked to play clean music, and I respond, all my music is clean. I don't have any. Well, I do have a few, but they're coded red in color. Um, so I do not drag those in to any school list playlist that I'm that I'm uh, doing. So there's no, you know, accidentally going to play a uh, uh, an unclean version. But I get asked that constantly. You know, as a matter of fact, this past weekend, Saturday night, the person who hired me was a mom uh, for the uh, PTA or whatever, and she comes up to me, you know, after I'm set up, and she goes, "Hey, the parents were just talking. Somebody went to a school dance." And they played a song and the kids started screaming out the uh, the dirty words. She goes, we don't want that here. And I'm like, well, I can't control the kids. OK, I can't control what they listen to or where they listen to it. If they're listening to a version on the radio, it's going to be clean. If they're listening to an album cut in their car off their uh, phone or or whatever, um, they, they're going to hear the, the, the uncut version. And they're going to know the words. So I may be playing the clean version, 
but they're going to scream sometimes, especially high school students are going to scream like uh, Mo Bamba. They're going to they're going to scream that at the top of their lungs. And I'm fine with that. You know, I don't have a problem with that. I'm playing the clean version uh, and I let them know that now middle school and elementary school. I play especially elementary school stuff. I play super clean. You know, there, there's no chance of even, even a dirty word. But I will preface this by saying that even Taylor Swift, some of her most popular songs, you know, the uncut versions of those have, you know, the F-bomb, some of them, um, you know, um, they, they've got words in them. And it's all over. It's all over the radio. I mean, you know, you don't hear it on the radio, but those are the versions, you know, that the album versions have it. So yeah. it, it, it's out there. And but yeah, I mean, as, as a DJ, you just got to, you know, make sure that you remind them that I'm playing clean music. OK, I can't control what the kids are going to scream out, um, but we will do the best we can. OK, and just it's a learning it's a learning moment for them, for moms and dads that are there and uh, and for the administrators. So yeah, it, it's hard. Sure it's hard, I'm sure it's hard for you guys. I'm sorry. A couple ahead, Mike. Ago and the kids and the kids were requesting Mo Bamba, and I told them I didn't have a clean version of it. And I just wouldn't play it, and the administrator just fell in love with me. I'll, they'll probably book me to do all of their gigs now, you know, because I just wouldn't play it. I didn't care, you know. What about you, Matt? Do you do you submit a uh, list of songs that you're going to play before you go if a school asks? Only I, I only have to do that for one. Um, and the principal and all the admins review it. And do they listen to all the songs? Probably not. Um, but like, do they see that's the problem is like the students submit a list and then the list the students submit is all the explicit versions. And then when I submit mine, I tell them like, these are all radio clean. Uh, you know, the kids may sing the curse words, but they'll do that for any song. So um, most, most of the time, like it's a non-issue. Um, yeah. But it's the uh, that's only one. Other ones, they don't really care because they know. That, I mean, they're they're not stupid. They know what these kids are listening to on TikTok and in their free time on Instagram, whatever. Like, like what what the DJ plays is not gonna just suddenly make a kid, you know, think about uh doing crime or I don't I don't even know what the, the concern is. Mm -hmm. well, it, 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 Who cares? It, it's <laughs> it's just one of the things that you want to. You know, Try like my personal, well, my <laughs> personal philosophy is that, you know, like I have like 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 Jeff, like Mike um, is have radio edit stuff, stuff that's not to have yeah. offensive words in there stuff that can be taken out. And I will, you know, even at weddings, I go around certain songs because the fact that there's too much windows into a song. Now, again, weddings, we're dealing with more adults, more, usually uh, people 21 and up. And it's, if there's early in a day. You may have some younger uh, kids there, but usually they're a little bit older and, you know, you can get with a little bit more of them. I'm sure that as school function, you want to be even more uh, careful because, again, you don't want to offend someone. You don't know with, uh, you know, 200 kids or 300 kids or 500 kids or 100 kids. If one of those kids go home, tell their mom and dad and they're, they're, that mom and dad is uh, going to call the school and complain to the school. So just, you know. Playing, I, I think the safe bet is playing radio edit songs and making sure it's you know it's there. And you get if you see a song that's outright like you know up from Cardi B, yeah, that there there I probably I probably steer banger. away from. I that's probably steer around. You so, don't want to hear I them. Did, you don't want to hear them yell. The of that at the prom. <laughs> Broke boys don't deserve no. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Someone's coming up and they asking for well, certain they songs. They might as well let them know now, you know. <laughs> so Adrian E uh, said that uh, in the comments here, stuff that I got at a recent eighth grade dance were all the line dances, including the Mexican line dance from the band Carbo de uh, Duro. Dorado, I'm sorry. Uh, new music that the kids requested were were filthy rap songs that I was unable to play. Uh, Lil Uzi, uh, I Wanna Rock uh, worked great. That's a banger. It's always going to yeah, work. It's a big one. And there's a clean version of it, too. So. Yeah. I mean, all it says is damn. That's, I mean, if, yeah. if you got two dams and uh, the rest is clean. Yeah. Then, like, you, you're really going to. 
you really mix out out of out of after like half a verse because it's the song dies after the first damn yeah it's it's a it's a weird song it's a weird it starts song off like a big banger and then it just dies it dies completely, <laughs> yeah. completely. but kids it's love that, it they love that that tiktok 15 seconds you yep. know Exactly. Yeah, that's that 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 to me. I think TikTok is ruining music because of the fact that they only want to hear thirty seconds or forty seconds of a song. And they don't realize there's more song to it, and I run into that even um, with family members that are you know, young and they they hear stuff on TikTok, and it's like, you know, here's the whole song. Well, they only know that they only know the you know the chorus and the lyrics, and uh, you know the chorus and. And then a little bit after, or I know one part because they watch this video over and over again, and they know that one part. And it's like, no, there's more than sixty seconds to the song, or thirty seconds to the song. There's a, you know, the song is three minutes long, or three and a half minutes, or four minutes long. There's a whole song. You know, listen to the whole song, whole song. Like two thousand songs in the playlist for the night, so I could play thirty seconds of each one and just keep rolling. You know, all night. I know DJ Brentley, if he was here, he he loves that. He does that all the time. He does quick mix, mixing, goes through, you know, four, three, four, five hundred songs a night. And, you know, he loves that because that's what that, that's what the crowd wants at the club. I, I you know, to me, you know, again, it's it's fun and great, but to me, it's like you're not in, you know, as an adult, you're not enjoying it. And, you know, I, I have a, a sign off to the side here that I made for him that I showed once uh, before the show uh, that says, you know, no quick mixing <laughs> allowed. And I, I I truly believe in that, you know, again, mixing it out of a song, that's fine. Great. There's always breaks and stuff like that. You can go in and out beat match and beat match out, or you can do stuff, you know, get out of a song. Like, again, like the mm -hmm. one song we were just talking about, but I feel that, um, you know, most songs, you know, you're playing 80, 90% of the song. You're pretty good right there. If you're playing, you know, 10, 20, 30% of a song, I think you're missing part of that song. You're missing some of the energy and some of the fun. And especially some of these people are going to be like disappointed, but like, well, where's the rest of the song? Are you going to play the rest of the song later? So it, it's one of the odd things. Um, let's see here. Uh, well, I guess, uh, Mike, uh, <laughs> from your son, it, uh, it's corn is requested uh that my dad got at my mom and my prom at the mommy and me prom uh, so they were someone requested corn at the mommy and me prom it's corn yeah i had no idea what the song was talks about corn mm. and the field yep. the corn <laughs> song I get this from TikTok. Tidy, like, just how it's how cool. how, like, just it's how stupid it was you know? but yeah that's a good example you know what i mean it's corn is a request that my dad got at the mommy and me prom. Yeah, so little kids are asking band, for it's a corn. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the band corn. Kid. Yeah, which I'm like, <laughs> if I saw KOR, uh, if I saw corn, the band requested <laughs> from a little kid, you know, like I'm taking these are small children, you know, six, seven, yeah, eight. Props. Yeah, I'd be like, we dog, got it. Listen to corn. <laughs> Your parents are bringing you up right. <laughs> yes. Next, they, they asked for some Slipknot, and they asked for some Disturbed. They're like, "Wow, where's my where's Tracy at? Because Tracy, the tra this is Tracy's alley here. Because <laughs> she's like, she likes that Slipknot, Disturbed, and uh, Godsmack, and so forth, so on. You know, it's like, oh, hey, Foo Fighters, no problem, <laughs> Tracy. <laughs> So, uh, uh, God, we we could probably tell some uh, horror stories uh, all night with some of the song requests that uh, we get as DJs. But I want to ask you guys this one right here. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a scenario, and um, I'm sure you probably have run into it before. You're at a wedding. Uh, you pull up, and you load into the venue, where the venue is, and you set everything up. And you go to uh, start doing stuff. You start start you know testing your equipment, and you notice something's off, something's not working right, and you track it down to your power supply coming from whatever it is, um, and your power supply the source is not close by. The source is let's say a hundred feet away. Do you? look for another source or do you try to work with that source there? 
because we kind of ran into that with the wedding we just did. It was an outdoor wedding, a tent wedding. And uh, we uh, have uh, one of those uh, inline interrupters, basically, uh, you know, a, a ground default interrupter. And we plugged it in. And when um, we first plugged in, I noticed uh, this thing hum coming from the speakers from the power. And then we put the, disru the disruptor in. And it kind of cleaned it up. And I, I run Furman uh, power strips. So they have, you know, filters in there. They, they filter the power. They, 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 they regulate stuff uh, very well. But, <clears throat> you know, and it, it, it went away. So we plugged in the, uh, the, 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 the ground default. Um, where's my light? Uh, <laughs> the ground default system. There we go. <laughs> and, um, I was wondering if you guys run into that kind of problem. And if so, what do you usually try to do to rectify the situation? So Jeff, I know you have to do stuff sometimes, not just venues, but also at schools and stuff. If you run into a problem with power and stuff, do you switch outlets? Do you try to track it down what it is? Do you try to put filters in or what do you usually try to do? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you can run into different things. I usually try to run to two outlets uh, just to be safe. Um, you know, that, that's my preferred method and hopefully they're you know i don't have a tester that i you know unless i trip the circuit to know that they're on different circuits but um but i usually try to run the two outlets uh if I've, I've never gotten a hum except here in my house uh and that was from a bad power supply for my laptop and i just uh put a um put a hum buster on that but i use trip light uh, isobar surge protectors so i got two of them on one on each uh uh strand and that seems to handle everything nicely you know the um, outdoor event that i did just a few weeks ago uh 200 foot run you know but um i'm using 12.3 wire too you know which is super thick and you're not going to lose a lot uh so that uh you know i've never had a problem and i've run into two different outlets on that um so yeah i mean as long i think it's as long as you're running some type of uh, protector that's a, a decent quality. Uh, you're not going to have much much issue. Um, but like I said, the only time I've ever had a hum was from an, and I isolated to figure out where it was coming from. It was my um, power supply for my laptop, and that plugged into the same system. And um, yeah, that happens. I I just you know again right we kind of I I I know I know I don't think Tracy heard it but I heard it you know a little bit and I'm like okay that's why you know had her go run and grab the to protect us as well we're outside we're in a tent it was you know didn't rain this past weekend here in the Chicagoland area uh, it was nice and dry it was like lower seventies upper sixties beautiful wedding for this couple and it was something I want to make sure it doesn't have that this is way before they showed up way before. Uh, anything was going on. So we, we, you know, we, it's, it's one of the early things. And I was surprised with the Furman's that it was something there, but you know, I've always tried to make sure uh, stuff is good. If we run into problems, you know, to try and make sure the power is clean as possible and different venues, some, some venues run into old venues. They have old wiring and stuff like that. And you don't know what they have plugged in ice machine or something like that plugged in the same line. You're like, Oh man. Okay, great. So Matt, what about you? What do you do if you run into a situation that you're hearing noise coming from the power side, not from anything you're doing, but from the power side, what do you usually try to do? Do you switch outlets? Do you try to look for another outlet? Do you try to put filters on? Uh, I don't think I've ever had that problem. I don't believe that those power conditioners do absolutely anything at all. Um, Furman, anything Furman, it doesn't do anything, honestly. Um, Maybe, I mean, if you believe it does, great. I <laughs> I guarantee the power sounds exactly the same. Uh, I don't know. I think it's just an overpriced power surge protector. I just use, I, I have nice, uh, honestly, I have Amazon Basics power strips that have lasted me six, seven years and still going. And I had one of my power strips actually went out. It was a perfect example. I had a, a nice AKG, uh, the ones that make those giant battery backups. I had one of their nice power strips and uh, the USBs on the end of it, it has two USB plugs on the end. One of those was kind of off center, so maybe it got hit or bumped or something. But the plugs right next to it, I was getting no power out of. The four, the first four were fine. Those last two were not working. And so, um, luckily, I always have an extra power strip. But like if I if I ever hear like a hum, 
I never think it's power. I don't know. That's not usually my first thing. I always think it's like either a wire or the signal's hot or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, I've never, I've also never tried Never it. Part until of it is just, so maybe, maybe I'm the one that's wrong. Um, I, I just, I have friends that use them and I tell them it doesn't do anything. okay what about you but mike I, have you run into uh problems with power anywhere with uh I always, but like, you know me, I'm running dual 21s and, and all sorts of stuff. So, I mean, if, if oh yeah I'm at a you're venue, you're I drawing use that. power from 50 different locations probably I, yeah i use that that circuit cue that um tells you if it's on a separate circuit or not the little plug thing um so that's a life that's a lifesaver so i always i always try to separate i put if i'm running my big setup with a tap like a dual 21 and the nxl tower i put both of those on one circuit and the other set on the other circuit and then all my dj stuff on a separate circuit and all my lighting on a separate circuit so we got four separate circuits um and that way nothing nothing collapses the thing that goes most for me is If there's not enough power at the venue, just in general, or whatever circuits we're using, and I'm using cold sparks, the sparklers won't fire. Like they have a protector in them that says we're not, we don't have enough power to get up to heat. We're just going to not work. So uh, I'm looking, I'm looking at getting those battery banks that they make for the sparklers. The problem is, I leave my sparklers on on all night because we don't just use them for an exit or a grand entrance or a first dance. We use them all night. So I those only have like a two hour battery life. So I. I don't really see the, maybe they'd be good for like a first dance, but I, I don't charge people based on a first dance. I, you know, we run the sparklers all night. Well, you know, that's one of the things is that with, with battery power, you have limited and those sparklers, I'm sure draw a lot to get the heaters running and the, and the, uh, everything working and keeping up with everything. Just when we hit that button, it's instantaneously going, you're not waiting for it to go. It's kind of like, um, anything else that draws a lot of power, you're either heating or cooling something, you need to have enough power there to do so. Uh, what about you, Mike? Have you run into situations you run into um, with power problems? I don't really run into power problems. Like uh, I was having an issue with my system and it turned out that, uh, you know, the RCA cable I was using was bad. You know, I had an extra one with me, but I don't really have those kind of power problems either. You know what I mean? Like if something is humming or if I'm getting some type of some type of noise out of my equipment, it's it's usually in the cabling. You know, like maybe one of my XLRs went bad, or or in this case, it was my RCA to 3.5 millimeter that went bad. You know what I'm saying? And so it, it was kind of easy for me to sort of track that sort of thing down because when you you know I run a similar system a lot of the time, so if you know if issues like that occur, it's usually cabling that goes bad eventually i mean everything oh yeah Cab fail. cables it's always go bad you got replacement cables um i've never I'm, had an I, issue with power it's never yeah, I'm, I'm glad two of you guys have and i know i've run into it I with mean, uh, sturdy power here and there <laughs> well it is chicago well yeah, i'm not i wasn't <laughs> in the chicago i wasn't in chicago it's outside but it's okay <laughs> i was just kidding anyways <laughs> hey i, I tell yeah, you i, I had know. one wedding um two years ago where we were set up out of an old barn and that's where i pulled my power from it was this wiring was coming down the wall it was exposed uh what i plugged no, into it was rickety and it was like shaking and my my plug wouldn't even stay in it. It was so old. I had to tape it on it with some uh, with some gaffer tape. And <laughs> you know what? It worked great the whole night. It worked great. Not not one problem. But that was when I was plugging into that. I was worried. Oh God, this is we're going to blow something. Something's going to catch on fire. You know, <laughs> like... sketchy outlets. Yeah, and you run into it every so often at venues. Uh, I, I've run into it a couple times that. The outlet they have for the in a DJ area um, is just worn out from all the everyone plugging stuff in and out, in and out, in and out. You know, you you figure three times a weekend, and the venue's been around for a few years, and every you know DJ band whatever comes in there, and they, they plug into these all the time, in and out, in and out, in and out. They start losing you know grip of uh, of the plug, and you know. I I ran into that a few a couple of years ago. Um, we were just going along, and I think it was 
I think what I'm going to say was cocktail time. And all of a sudden everything just died. And I'm like, what the heck's going on here? And here is the, the plug. No one's near it. The plug just like whoop, came halfway out. And it's like, oh, great. That's nice. You plug it back in. But you feel it just like there's no resistance whatsoever. When you plug in a plug in, you usually feel a little bit of resistance going in. No resistance whatsoever. And it's like, oh, great. It's kind of like your plug that you had. And you're like, yeah, it's it's just, you know, I feel facility managers should uh, and owners should do some maintenance. And I know that there's some knuckleheads out there, DJs, bands, whoever, that don't care and plug stuff in whatever way they can. They'll smash it in, whatever. And they don't take care of their equipment, their gear. But you need to account for that and say, hey, you know what? Uh, I need to replace these outlets. You, you know, 110, 110 volt outlet. You know, I need to turn it off the circuit break and go replace it real quick. You know, I can go get replacement one at a home improvement store and replace it or have your maintenance person take care of it. But just, you know, again, doing doing barn weddings. I've done some barn weddings like that with the, you look at the wiring and you look at stuff. You're like, if it rains, this roof crawl leak is, uh, <laughs> should I be underneath this part of the roof? <laughs> uh, Mike, you yourself down oh. there in central Illinois. Um, you run into anything with that with uh, barn weddings? Um, I do a lot of stuff in parks, like I, not not so much barns. I did that Chautauqua Auditorium thing, which is like this huge round barn from like eighteen hundred or something. And I was concerned about the wiring in there, so I called the city about it and actually asked them if I needed to take any precautions or anything. And they were like, no, nah, no one's ever called NASA set before. And I was like, well, this place is like 100 years old. You know, like, I'm, I'm running a ton of equipment. Like, like what, what are we talking about? You know, I mean, I had my trussing. I had tons of lighting up. I mean, I had the whole nine yards for this event. So, I mean, I was concerned about it. But uh, I didn't have any problems there. Fortunately, I was able to plug into multiple circuits on either side of the stage. I mean, I had to bring a ton of extension cord with me. But other than that, I didn't, I don't really run into too much barn type stuff, you know. So, Kurt. How you going, guys? Sorry for my rudeness. No problem. What's going on, Kurt? How are, How are you doing? You're talking about power power things, eh? Power yeah. issues. Or... Have, you, have you ever run into a situation that you plugged into an outlet? And I don't know. Australia, I know you guys have different plugs that we have up here. We have the Edison plug uh, and mm -hmm. you 110 volts. I know you guys do that. Uh, 220, 50 hertz. 220, <laughs> 50 hertz, right? 220, 240 volts, something like that. Yeah, you're, but you're 50 hertz, right? Not 60 hertz? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think you guys are 50 hertz. I mean, I may be wrong. If I'm wrong, please put it down in the comment area, wherever the hertz are. But I know you're higher voltage than we do um, mm. and different have different outlets. But have you ever run into, you, you go to a venue and you plug in uh, your uh, plugs for power and you start getting noise on your system. And if you do, what is your next course of doing? Mm. Do you switch outlets? Do you try to put a filter on? Uh, do you try mm. to use equipment that has filters built into it or anything like that? Or I've, I've definitely had the loose plug, you know, what you were talking about before. Uh, and you get those venues where they're just, they're cheap on the maintenance. They don't want to fix anything. And you do tend to get the outlet that's, you know, pretty loose. Um, I do try and bend with our power cords. We can sort of bend the, the prongs just a little bit to get a little bit more friction uh, when you plug it in. But uh, I'm, I'm actually trying to avoid cheap venues that, you know, don't fix the air conditioning and don't want to change the, the plug outlet, stuff like that, if I can, that is. Uh, but, yeah, I've, I've ran into that before. A few times. Uh, one venue I did, it was out of town. It was, it was an, actually a caravan park. It was a New Year's Eve gig. And they, um, the power, they had bad power sort of out in the middle of nowhere. But um, the, the power cut off two or three times throughout the night. And um, they said, oh, we'll, we'll turn on the generator if it does it again. And it was, yeah, just dodgy. Yeah, and that's, that's the but thing yeah, is no, that... I've, that's the thing is it's hard to do. It's it's hard to run into that when you run into power, you know, outlets, you know, not working correctly. Uh, and you know, when you run into that, and, and again, you ran into the in, at, at the at, you said at a, a trailer park that you uh, were doing an event at or uh, a campground, mm. and they said they're going to switch over to the gender. 
Did, was a generator a pure sine wave generator, like one of those nice Honda generators, oh, or just like a, a just a regular run the mill generator? It was the first time there, so you know they got me for New Year's Eve, and to be honest, it was a bit of a bit of a bummer night. They uh, they were on a budget, and uh, yeah, I, I I wasn't trusting their generator, so let's put it that way. <laughs> I I don't I don't yeah. blame you, especially you know you want to. Uh, you want to do the right things, but you have to uh, yeah. kind of look at it and go, yeah, uh, I, you know what? I'm I'm going to pass on this one. <laughs> and I'm just looking at I'm just looking up uh, on your uh, connector because um, I'm I'm curious because every area is different, you oh. know, from UK to Australia to here to the United States. We share the same plug in Canada, United States, Mexico, and Japan, and a few other countries. You know, they have the Edison style plug, but I was looking at uh, your plug. And it's you know it's it's kind of like big fins, you know, kind of like angled on the angle and, like that. Yeah. yeah, they're angled. So I, in the I can, if I triangle. need to, I can I can bend them just slightly to get a bit more friction when you plug it in. I don't know if you can do that with the American plugs. Yeah, you can. Um, I, I've done I've can, done it. Yeah. Jeff, have you yeah. done that? Had to uh, bend plugs a little the plugs a little bit to get them in there better. Yeah. Oh yeah. And um, yeah, actually, one time I had to cut the ground off of, of a uh, <laughs> of one because I was set up where they only had a two prong outlet, not a whole outlet. And I, uh, I did not have a, uh, uh, I, 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 that was, this was years ago. And I, I did not have in my pack, the little, you know, two to three converter. And uh, so, yeah, I just took a pair of pliers and I did it. I just broke it off a cheap uh, extension cord and used that. But um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fortunate happens. Yeah, Mike, you said you got a couple of the uh, the gray little plugs that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not breaking the grounds off my equipment. You know what I mean? Off mm -hmm. my IECs. Yeah, so I, I carry at least two. Yeah, but how many IECs you have? You, I don't know. I got, I got so many IECs. I, I have apes. a bin. I have bin of IEC I cables. Bin, yeah. You know, <laughs> if you need IEC cables. I'll send you some. <laughs> Well, I'm not talking about the like the two foot or the four foot ones that you're, you know what I mean, that you get with just about everything. And we all have like a hundred of them. Like I, I can't use four foot IECs. You know what I mean? As my, as my, you know, setup gets wider, my cabling has to get wider to you. So it's like what you use a four foot IEC grab and an extension cord. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, uh, well, but I got, they all plug into I got a power strip. So the extension cord on that power strip, if it's two prong, I just put the converter on that, you know what I mean? And that way all my stuff is oh, yeah. literally adapted. So I, I just, you know, when when I look at stuff like that and I see it, uh I, I haven't run into a while. There's a venue I used to go to all the time. I haven't been there in years. Um they changed management and the man new management came in. It's like, no, we have our own, you know, DJs and we know we have our own people we know. I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, but they had throughout the whole building was this two prong outlet because it was a turn of the century building, a historic building. Uh, the electricity was put in like in 1920, whatever. And, you know, you're talking to a hundred year old bill, uh, over a hundred year old building. And they're like, no, we don't want to take away from the aesthetics and put in new modern outlets. It's like, okay. So that outlet from 19, whatever is still here. And it's uh, 20, you know, this is like 2014. And uh, I, I got to have a bunch of adapters. And that's what I did. I bought a bunch of adapters and used a bunch of adapters. But, uh, you know, I have tons of IEC cables. And, you know, again, you have some of the two-foot ones and four-foot ones that come with stuff. But, you know, I, I also How's buy the 10-foot. and Yeah. Triple, out, triple outlet. That's the most handiest thing I've ever bought. Yeah. Into one, one plug. Yeah, what kind of plug is that? That's an Australian plug. That's their that's their plug. That, I know. I that's know. our that's our weird. What plug. the heck? <laughs> well, they're doing two hundred. Like, yeah, like two hundred twenty twenty forty volts. That's some voltage. Yeah. Yeah. Triple outlet. Awesome. That is so handy. You uh in Australia, they don't do like the, you guys don't do like the Brits do. They actually have power switches on each individual outlet, right? Because in Great Britain. Uh, on Great Britain, on the actual outlet, so you have two outlets right there. Each mm. one has its own power uh, switch on the outlet, so you can actually go up to the outlet and turn the individual outlet off. No, we're done. No, 
Yeah, I, 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 I see that on British stuff, and I'm like, that just, you know, that's that to me is an extra step. I, I'm like, in my house, I have a couple outlets on the wall that I could turn the switch mm-hmm. on, and it turns mm-hmm. the outlet because it's designed to plug in a lamp, and you could turn, you know, have a lamp come on. But I'm like, that just, you know, right at the outlet, have a switch right there where you got to flip the little switch off or on to turn the outlet on. I'm like, that mm-hmm. would, that would, especially at a venue when you're plugging stuff in, that would drive me crazy. It's like, man. I need this outlet on. Boom. Someone comes over and turns it off by accident. Something has to go wrong. <laughs> 15, uh, three phases good. I've used that a fair few times in the, when I do the big fight nights in the big shed. They got they run three phase or 15 amp outlet. So that's pretty handy. Oh, yeah. When you get the, again, when you, you guys have different power regula- regulations, different power requirements, and you know, uh, some different equipment there versus like here in the States. And it's it always interesting to hear what happens across the world, especially yourself. You know, you're living in the future, you're many hours ahead of us. It's already, you know, well, was it like Thursday there, right? At like, yeah. you know, noon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it is interesting because even though you may be across the world on the other side, you run into the same things that, you know, Jeff runs into in North Carolina or Matt runs into California or uh, Mike mm-hmm. and I run here in Illinois and in the Midwest. And it, it's, 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 it's kind of funny that it's, even though it's different, it's still the same. And it's, it's, it's that um, mm-hmm. fun stuff with DJing that uh, we all can feel the pain and all understand the, <laughs> the battle we trying to battle every day. Um, so, let me see what time. Oh, we got a couple minutes, only a couple minutes left here. Wow, we will go through this time so I'll, quickly I'll with everyone here. This weekend, baby. Yep, you're coming up here. I know you're coming up here to go yep. see uh, the Cubs. Which I'm like, okay, I'm a White Sox fan, so you can go see the Cubs. You know, uh, even though my nice. White Sox are struggling, I'm still a, a White Sox fan. Uh, but you know, hopefully you enjoy yourself. I'm I I know we'll be bugging you to hook up with you to to go uh, for lunch or uh, dinner or something. So we hook up with that. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, one other thing I want to ask um, you guys before you guys, before you get off here, one last thing with everything going on for this summer. Cause again, we're just starting our summers right now. Uh, the end of the end of May, looking at June, are you seeing people booking at last minute right now? Or are you still looking at people booking, pretty far out are you are you getting some last minute bookings right now jeff what, what about you are you still getting last minute bookings or are you getting booked further out uh no i just booked the wedding well two weddings on the same weekend in october um but i mean that's that's as short as far as weddings go school stuff um you know it was funny the lady who hired me saturday this past saturday night wants to hire me again she said um uh, for may 17th and I'm like, okay, I'll book it in there. She goes, 2025. <laughs> so, so that's pretty far out. Uh, that's not normal. But um, yeah, I mean, they they hired me to to do the uh, school picnic. You know, play for two hours for a school picnic here a couple weeks. You know, that that's pretty close in. You know, mm-hmm. just three weeks out. So you know, it it varies for schools, uh, proms. You know, those are usually booked a year in advance, kind of like weddings. Um, but you know, weddings. You know, it varies. Depends on the well, couple. Okay. What about you, Matt? What were you seeing out there in California? Are you getting booked quickly or still getting booked further out? Uh, still further out. I mean, I'm getting inquiries now for October. Uh, I mean, I'm booked. All I have left in October is two Sundays. I'm booked every Friday and Saturday uh, and most Sundays. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's on average, like, I, I don't know, because I still do get people that are like looking for June or July right now. And I'm like, we realize that June is next month. July is right after that. So people are, are getting on the bandwagon a little late. Uh, but it's also like some of the venues that they're selecting are ones that have more availability um, and like ones where preferred vendor it. So I know like those would come anyway. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to hit 75 this year. I'm at 69. So. We're getting there. I've got a couple couple in the works. A lot. Next year's looking good. Um, we've got, yeah, people are, people, I don't know, you get two types of people, the types that are like at wedding shows and like looking early because they realize that good vendors get booked quickly. But then you get the other people that are just like, eh, we'll find somebody. And it's like, 
Yeah. Some people are like, yeah, whatever. What about you, Mike? What are you run into in uh, central Illinois? Uh, um, I don't know. I'm still booking pretty far out. I just booked December. I booked a December date. I booked a September date. I've got bookings already for, for June, you know, and into the following months. But uh, right now, people are still hitting me up for later in the year. Well, okay. So they're still hitting you off further out. What about you down there in Australia? Are you getting mostly people further out? Or are you seeing a lot of people trying to hit you last minute, you know, a month or two out before an event? Um... No, I don't seem to get any last minutes anymore. Uh, and even if I did, um, would I really want to do it? Possibly, <laughs> possibly not. <laughs> Depends on the reason why it's last minute. But uh, no, I've got a few weddings coming up and yeah, a couple of sporting events I've done, like uh, awards nights. So yeah. Yeah, I know you do some boxing it, it's, stuff. It's, ac and... it's, actually, it's actually summer here now. So yeah. Yeah, but you're going, uh, yeah, you're, the, the, you're, you're going in your fall soon, right? Yeah. Uh, no, we're sort of starting summer, um, a late summer. Okay. Uh, winter, so I'm not talking about winter. You're okay. I say yeah, I, 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 you're opposite, cold. usually opposite of us. Yeah. But you, opposite, you're, yeah. where you're at, you don't get you don't get snow and cold, right? No, 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 nothing like that. No, we've had a long, drawn out summer. It's been, uh, yeah, winters finally starting to come late winter <laughs> well again you got one of these days you got to come up here to the united states up to chicago and enjoy a nice winter day with uh, us right. when in the in <laughs> j late january oh, yeah. early february yeah because yeah. uh, i get a little colder Snowing than mike does some, there yeah. in central illinois <laughs> mike's a little warmer than i am I, I get colder than he does and uh when it's negative uh temperatures you know we're looking at that for the high you know it's cold, <laughs> and Jeff doesn't yeah. get doesn't get as cold as we do. He gets a little bit of snow, but he does have. He said before the the show, he does have one of the highest mountains on the East Coast, and they do do some skiing uh, not too far from him. And uh, hopefully, he uh, got a chance nice. to enjoy that a little bit this past winter or uh, within the past couple of winters. So again, I want to thank you guys all for coming in tonight here on DJ Roundtable. Uh, just remember if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click that like button, subscribe, and then put down below a question, you know, critique, comments, criticisms, anything, put that down below. We always like hearing from you guys. We always like reading the questions and having stuff to talk about. And that's driven by you guys. It's, it's driven by you, the, the people who are watching and by everyone coming in. And I want to thank also DJ fire for coming in for a little bit. I know he's, he's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, with his business and stuff like that and some personal stuff going on. And for the DJs not here tonight, you know, I'm sorry that you weren't here or a little, you had to work or you had to uh, do a gig, but uh, again, it is the real world. And uh, next, next week, hopefully we'll have DJ Rachel on again. She was uh, under the weather today and we wish her a speed to recover. Hope she feels better and um, get some pizza in her and, get her to her gig this coming weekend and she enjoys herself. So, and you guys are going to be watching this on YouTube the following Monday. So hopefully tomorrow night, for you guys watch on YouTube in the future, DJ Rachel's on tomorrow night. Maybe we'll see. But uh, again, thank you guys all for tuning in. You guys have a good night.